Welcome to my channel, Outside the Levees. I'm Jared Serenay and today I'm hunting wild hogs with a good pack of dogs and some very experienced hunters. We hunted a wood line along a levee and it made for some very fun chases. Then I hit the kitchen and made a shredded pork sandwich with onions, mushrooms, and Swiss cheese. Now let's get it started. Let's go. Time to get them. All right, y'all, we hog dogging doing one of my favorite things. Really, it's just a good time. You get out here, let these dogs work, get on the four wheelers and chase down pigs. We got dogs barking already, so hopefully they own a pig and hopefully we'll be on one soon. The dog just went to the hog. Already? Yeah, so we're gonna turn one of these dogs loose to see if we can get him going. And then once we get him going, we'll, maybe, we'll pack a couple dogs to him. So when we came over the levee, the wind was blowing this way. So the, the dogs, the dog could smell that hog in the woods and the, the whole box blew up. All the dogs started balking. Some of the other dogs on the other bikes were balking. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but they're in here. I don't know if you can hear it with the wind, but you can, we hear the dogs barking. The dogs are barking in here. All right, we might have one. Let's go see. A four wheeler won't start. There's a hog bait on the levee too. They coming to get me now. stomach everybody got on their bikes to get off and go chase the bay and uh, my bike wouldn't start like of the, at the worst moment possible the bike wouldn't start and I missed the entire bay the entire sequence so I, I don't even know what to say but good thing is we brought enough dogs today um, we can keep on and hopefully we'll get some more we just stopped at this other spot Sounds like the dogs are already on something, so we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit better job next time. Sorry about that, and uh, let's just keep hunting. It's part of it. Look, 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 there's the hog right there. Saw it? Uh-oh. going that way. It looks like a big hog. Big hog? Yeah. All right, so tell me what's going on. So the dogs just jumped the hog. Leave it on, leave it on. And uh, they're running it right now. The hog just came out of that marsh. And they went in these woods right here on this ridge, and he's going that way now.
He's swimming? What dog is that? Well, the dogs are running that hog down this ridge, pushed him over these rocks. And now he's in a channel, ship channel here. And uh, we got a dog that went out there after him. The hog looks like he's giving up, but the dog's not. And uh, we're hoping we get that dog back to us uh, before the dog gets too tired. All right, I'll try to get y'all caught up. So we're on a good race for a good while. We ran out towards where that water was and a dog and a big pig swam out into the water. At that point, there's really nothing we can do. We didn't have a boat nearby. We believe that in the process, the hog drowned, died in the water, and then the dog turned around and swam back. So from there, while that was going on, we saw another hog cut behind us. So we jumped on the bikes to go chase, chase that hog. Now we finally caught up to the dogs. They caught and killed a little pig, and we're trying to get them back on the, you know, whatever larger pig they were trying to catch. So that's the update. It's been a very hectic morning. It's insane. So <laughs> stick with us. All right, so we were coming out of here, and they had the grass all laid over, and I was driving, and I I ran, I rolled, I rolled right on top of a big bull hog. He came out from under the bike, and we dumped the dogs on him. Yeah, dude, that was crazy. So, like, we're just leaving to go to the next spot. I'm sitting here, uh, Mark's at the front of the bike, and he's like, what, what is that? And this freaking hog just took off through this tall grass. So, this is what we need, y'all. We need something good. We need something good. The dogs ain't far behind him. Yeah, big hog. Big hog. Oh, fuck. You got the video on? Yeah. He's going towards the locks. I hope not. Golly. All right. Yeah, I didn't see that. 
We uh, we, were, we were running the hog and we were trying to cut him off before he swam. And we had a couple of opportunities to cut him off and we missed it. And they ran him in this corner in here somewhere. And they got the dogs coming here now to see if we can find where he went. Because we never did see him swim, so we'll see what happens. I think they got a hog bait in this thick pit right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 oh. patch right there. Dogs out my box. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. That is a big one. Good night. No. Show that dog where. We caught a glimpse of him. He's a big old boy. We're about to get on the bikes, and the dogs are running him again. This is the kind of pig that's gonna keep running. He's a big one. He's a big one. Yeah, all three of them did. My two puppies and him. Huh? Oh, 
Mouth. Maul. Cameraman down. Might even catch another one. I think the mother dog is still running one. Yeah, we. How many we caught? Three. They must have the boar. I don't know what happened to the boar. Yeah. I think them dog, the other two dogs, they still running them, and I got all my dogs down on them too. We just came over here because these dogs were bead. Catch this hog. And we caught three, two swam. Yeah, two swam, huh? Yeah. And we still running one. So they ain't done yet. All right, well that was a hell of a hunt y'all. We missed the first pig, but we got on plenty after that. Kept them dogs working, kept catching them. So now we can get back to the house and eat. All right, well man, that was about as an action-packed hunt as it really gets. Those dogs worked the entire time. The pigs ran the entire time. You gotta give both of them credit, like the dogs and the pig, they just, none of them have any quit. So, with that being said, I wanna go ahead and cook one. This is real easy, real simple. It's just a pork sandwich. I actually thought it up while we're riding on the four wheeler. I forgot to bring any snacks that day. I was starving and I'm thinking about food and I thought about what to cook. So I'm gonna show you all what I'm doing. It's all gonna happen right here in the pressure cooker. If you don't have a pressure cooker, you gotta get you one. It makes everything fast and easy. We're gonna add a little bit of oil. So I'm gonna make about five sandwiches total. So I'm dropping one and a half onions. A large container of mushrooms that they sell at the store. Some garlic powder, some salt. Don't want to do this too heavy because I got a, a nice seasoning that I'm gonna put on the pork. Mix it up. We'll just let that cook down. When that's cooked down, we're gonna pull it out. So while that's cooking down, I'm gonna go ahead and season up my pork. All right. So this is the back strap off of one of those hogs. It's been sitting in ice. What you want to do is dry it off real good. I use a paper towel and just pat it real dry. And the reason I do this is because I'm gonna sear it before it gets locked up in the pressure cooker because the searing helps create more flavor. And it won't sear right if it's too wet. So we sear it, and then we cook it down. The season I'm gonna use on this is the Texas Gold by Pork Mafia. It's uh, got some onion, some garlic, some salt, pepper, but it's got vinegar in it. And it just creates kind of like, a, it's meant to be like one of those, like almost like those yellow barbecue sauces. And I just really, really like this on pork. So that's what we're going to hit it with. You don't need to use a lot of this. It goes a long way. Okay. All right. That's pretty much it. And then I do want to cut in the chunks because that makes it, you know, Takes up less room in the pot, can do more at once. Now 
That's it. Let's go check on our onions and our mushrooms. All right, my mushrooms and onions are ready. That was about a 15 minute cook time. Go ahead and get them completely out. They are done. You won't need these again until you are ready to make your sandwich. So get them out and set them off to the side. Nice and cooked down. They go good on top of that pork. And nice and cooked down. Gonna go good on top of that pork. All right, now it's time to sear off the pork. You want to add about two tablespoons of oil back into the pot because this part is going to get, it's uh, it's going to go off. It's going to get pretty hot in there. It'll be a lot of smoke. So you want to drop that pork in. That's the sear I'm looking for. Ideally, you only want to do enough of this at a time to cover the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and do it all. I'll get stuck. It's short on time, it's a weeknight, that would be what it is. It's not that bad. So what I like to do when I'm searing is really only have just enough to cover the bottom and nothing on top, but you know, there's a little bit on top here, but we'll be all right. All right, well, I'll be honest, I rushed it. I, I did put too much in there at once and I'm not getting the sear that I want. It's still gonna be good, it's gonna be fine, but I'm just, I'm not gonna get that perfect sear with all the gras do on the bottom. There's just simply too much moisture in there at this point to get the real good sear but as you can see there's still a lot of good stuff going on in there and uh it's just what happens when you try to rush things and it is what it is you know if you got to cook a wheat night meal you got to cook a wheat night meal so um it's not cooked all the way through at this point so really all i need to do is add some beef stock i think it's going to take about half of this i don't think it's going to take the full thing but let's see what we get but with a pressure cooker you always need to cook with some sort of liquid or some sort of moisture in there you can't cook this stuff dry but uh i'd say that's probably good right there and i want to crank the heat up which it is up it's real simple you just put your lid on close it till you hear a click okay so when you're using a pressure cooker you're looking for two things right this is your little weight that you put on the pressure valve and you're waiting on that little knob to come up okay that is now almost all the way up and once it does this thing's going to start spinning okay when that starts spinning real good i'm going to turn my heat down to about a medium all right so you see here now my heat's all the way high and this thing's spinning really good you don't want to run it like that the entire time i'm going to turn my heat all the way down from a little bit over a nine almost at a ten to a five and i'm going to go ahead and set a timer 45 minutes that should be plenty enough to get this nice and tender so we'll let that cook down and we'll check on it when it's done all right it's all done what you want to do on the pressure cooker is when your timer goes off you want to get it off the heat get it entirely off the heat sometimes i'll take it outside get it off the heat set it down and then take something or either like wear wear a good glove or take a spoon like this and i just tip i tip that up and what that does, it allows all that steam and pressure to come out of this valve. As the pressure comes out, the pressure inside of the pot drops, and then this little, that little tab right there is gonna drop down. You cannot open the lid until that tab drops down. So now that I know it's safe, go ahead and open it. You can see, I'm back on the heat now, come check it out. It's still, uh, it's still cooking in there, okay? But that's good. Turn the heat nice and low. As you can see, it's still in chunks. So I'm gonna show you how to take those chunks and turn that into the nice, delicious shredded pork that we're aiming for. So I know y'all recognize this guy, right? That's for your mashed potatoes. If you're gonna cook with a pressure cooker like this, cooking wild game, you need to get you one of these. So I'm gonna take, just get in there just like our mashed potatoes. Start breaking it up. It's tender, don't worry. It's not like, it doesn't need to cook any longer and just cause it was in chunks, I don't, you know, it's, it's it's very, very tender meat. And that's the, the beauty of the pressure cooker. It takes meat even like this from a, a larger boar and it, it just makes it tender. I'm gonna add water to make it uh, like a gravy back in there, you know? This is similar to the way you would do like a roast beef or a roast beef po' boy. I'm definitely happy with it. All right, okie doke. Now, all right, now the bread I went with on the sandwich is just some garlic and herb bread. Now I'll tell you one thing, this bread is really, it's, it's like really wide. 
And uh, for whatever reason, when I thought of this sandwich, I, I just thought of like a little bit like thinner, like po' boy bread, but I like the idea of having the season on top of the bread. So all I did was just slice it down. So now it's at like a, a width that I feel like just fits this sandwich better. About that size there, I melted some cheese. Well, put it in, toasted it, then melted some cheese. Take some nice, healthy scoop. Couple healthy scoops here. Okay, another healthy scoop. And one more little healthy scoop. Those little mushrooms and onions that we cooked earlier. Once again, I thought of this on the hunt. I was starving, and I said, what would I kill to eat right now? And this was it. Let everybody get to know each other. Oh, look at that. Look at the juice. Look at the juice. Look at the juice. Look at it. Mm. That's why we do that. And then, simple little sandwich and chips. Some Zaps Voodoo on the side. Some Zaps Voodoo chips. And there's your sandwich. All right, let's see if everything I was dreaming about comes to uh, reality. Daddy. Daddy. That's a good call on the seasoned bread there. So, hope y'all enjoyed it. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button. Click the notifications bell down below. And we'll see y'all soon.